<laughs> it's Joe here again, and I'm going to talk to you about my favorite topic in gaming, horror. Hmm, I think we're going to need some light for this. Let there be light. As many of you know, I'm the author of Rapture, The End of Days, which is definitely firmly in the horror genre. But I've also worked on things such as Blood of the Innocent, uh, the upcoming Infest Asia, and uh, a new game, Top Secret, shh, which will be out shortly. Um, and all of those have definitely horror themes. So you might say, who is this freak who loves horror so much? Well, the reality is, um, the majority of horror movies out these days, I don't watch. I don't like them. Um, and I make a very big differentiation between what I consider horror, or more specifically fear, in my games, and shock value, uh, and uh, gratuitousness. So I'm much more tongue-in-cheek with my horror. Now this is really important. You see, there's a couple of different ways that horror, or fear, reacts with the human body through, through our neural um, pathways. And there's some fascinating research coming out now about this. In fact, I'll publish some of that online for you as well to, to, to read. But something that we do know is that if you watch kids play in the playground, or especially, you know, late at night, there's, there's often an element of pretending to be scared. Now, what's interesting is pretend and play, as we know, goes through the same neurological pathways as reality, also as reading and as imagination. These are all, it all goes through the same machinery in our brain. So when we are scared and running around as playing being scared, we actually feel scared. We feel that little bit of fear, but with a little difference from reality. When we're playing with fear, especially as kids, we're giggling and we're laughing and so forth. And why is that? Humor is being activated. Why is that? It's because there's a dissonance. We, we feel scared, but we know full well that we're safe. So, you know, the monster under the bed, or going all the way down to even babies, peekaboo. That type of fear comes with the dissonance of reality, and it's fun, and it's funny, and it's humorous, because you take something which the brain is expecting in one way, and then you flip it on its head and become something else. It's that eureka moment, and that makes us feel good. And so what you'll notice in the majority of my games especially, um, there is definitely an element of taking things and flipping them on their head, fooling people, the twist, and thus the games are well, I'm going to be honest, I, re I reckon that they're funny, but then again, I have a very strange sense of humour. Now, let me demonstrate this. The easiest way, I think, to demonstrate is to take a look at the works of Stephen King. He is a master of this. He'll take something completely innocuous, like a car, and he'll turn it into some evil demon being that's going to hunt you down and make you fall in love with it. And, oh, you know. So he, he brings all of those very normal ideas together and perverts them which makes it fun, possibly funny. I'd actually argue that Christine was hilarious, but again, I have a very strange sense of humor. On the flip side, you can have um, stories uh, such as Saw, which are really about enacting a very different type of neurological pathway. And that is what I'm gonna call shock. Basically, that cuts right down to the core of us. Now, some people find those sort of events enjoyable, I personally don't, and I'm not going to pass any judgments. And the reason that they find it enjoyable is it's an adrenaline kick. You actually get the fight or flight reaction going on rather than the dissonance. So, let's bring this back to gaming, shall we? In gaming, what do you want? I firmly believe that a good horror game should be um, uh, the former. It should be about that funny aha moment, that eureka moment, that, that dissonance not the shock value. And here's why. When you're playing at a role-playing table and you are working with people's emotions, you're going to have a very direct line. The storytelling and the interactive storytelling that is taking place is activating those creative pathways, is activating those, those neural pathways. And if you start to enact a real feel response, let's call it a real fear response, or this, this shock response, it's uncomfortable. And while it can be numbing, 
it's not necessarily inducive for creativity. It's inducive for getting the hell out of Dodge. Whereas the former one, the dissonance, once you start that, more creativity gets stemmed, more ideas get stemmed, more humor gets, get, gets created, and thus the story will continue. So, give you an example of this, of where it's done right and where it's done wrong in some of my own games. Um, there's one of my games which is called uh, Destiny's Children. It's a, it's a module for Rapture. And in it, there's a scene where you come across a baby. I know this is going to be a spoiler. If you've not played the game where you want to, stop watching now. But there's a scene where you come across an injured baby. And uh, it's horribly malformed, but the natural instinct for everybody when you see a little baby going, Help me, help me. Yeah, the, the freaky thing is the baby's actually asking for help. Is to pick up the baby and try and rescue it. That's the natural thing to do. And of course, in the play tests and at the cons, um, about 8 out of 10 groups would always do that. Uh, one of them just shot the baby in the head. But then again, they were a pretty ruthless bunch. But yeah, you grab the baby. Now, little do you know, this baby is evil baby. It's actually one of several. And of course, it takes a big chunk out of your throat the first time, chance it gets. Um, so what we've done there is we've taken something which is perfectly normal and perfectly harmless and turned it on its head, made it scary. Another good example of that was uh, an adventure that Ray has worked on where uh, he takes the construct of marriage and loss and love and flips it on our head in a very dark way. Uh, let's just say it involves cloning, uh, it involves headless people, and it involves um, feeding tubes, and it's all just wrong. But it's wrong in all the right ways, because every player I know who's gone through that playtest has gone, man, that's messed up. But they've got a smile on their face, just like that little baby peekaboo giggling like crazy. Now, let me tell you when it's done wrong, when you use that shock vector. I was running a, uh, it was basically a Call of Cthulhu-esque type game, but it was based on real events here in Australia, in Sydney. And um, what I did is, uh, I, there was a series of uh, um, child murders uh, that I had added to this real scenario of a disease which was going around. And um, the heroes were on the trail of the serial killer. They were actually police investigators and forensics experts. And because they were going to be playing forensics experts, I said, I will make sure I know exactly how autopsies are done. So I looked that up and I did all my research. And during the game, I was describing the autopsy. Now, it, it was pretty gruesome. And uh, I was describing, actually, uh, opening up the, the, the poor child victim and then discovering that certain body parts had been removed. And one of the players in my group who is a, a very, very bright person clearly got uncomfortable. In fact, he got more than uncomfortable. He got emotional and he said, I have to stop playing this. And what was happening is he knew enough about medical science and autopsies to know what I was saying was absolutely 100% true. So I hadn't taken something novel and switched on its head and, and done that lovely dissonance. I was just playing for the gut, visceral emotion of, of, of terror. And it affected him. And it affected him not in a comfortable way, not even in a fun way, but a way that actually stopped the game. And we had to stop that. So there's a very valuable lesson for me as, as a GM. That, that was quite some time ago. Horror must be fun. It must be based on surprise, and it must be based on dissonance if it's going to be fun and surprising. And that, my friend, is the heart of humour. In other words, fear in role-playing games, horror in role-playing games, is very, very close, if you do it well, to humour. I'll let you think about that. In the meantime, I'm going to give you my most evil laugh. <laughs> Happy gaming, victims. Cheers.